with engagement during virtual events. Today, we will be not only talking about uh, creating uh, virtual engagement and interaction and giving you some practical tips, you will, also you will also experience some of those activities and techniques that to, so you can replicate them in your very own meetings. Before we dive in though, we would like to ask one more question um, about you. So who are you? Who do you associate yourself with the best? Are you from agency, technology, event, corporation, or other? Once again, you can join through exactly the same way, uh, exactly the same way like for the opening poll. And just let us know. In this case, you can pick even uh, more options. So if you are from the technology company but still organizing events, pick two. So we've got event uh, organizers in the lead, Christina, agency that's as well. A, that's good news. It's, I guess, highly relevant to what we are going to talk about, but it's also relevant for, the, for everyone else who picked another category. So it's nice to see the variety of you guys online. Perfect. So let's move on to the next one. And uh, the second question before we jump into the, to the content, we would actually love to ask you, how would you currently rate interaction at virtual events? So you've probably by now attended many virtual events, or perhaps you have actually organized or hosted uh, some of them yourselves, but how would you rate the interaction there? How would you rate the engagement with the attendees? One being not interactive at all, and six being the very, very most interactive event you have ever attended. So on average, what do you guys think? On, from one to six, where would you put your, put your boat? Right. So we are exactly somewhere around the middle. That's what we were expecting, right? Uh, so exactly. And we can see that only 11 of you, 12 of you joined. We've got over 30 people on the call. So once again, I'm going to repeat very quickly. Uh, you can join by scanning the QR code in the left or just via the link that Christina shared. So thank you so much for letting us know uh, what you think about the interaction level currently uh, and why it's actually relevant. And nobody said it better than our dear friend and also like a professional presentation coach, uh, Nathan Gold. He said interaction went from nice to have to, from nice to, have to must have for virtual events. And we are actually battling with all those distractions, right? To keep attendees' attention. And that's exactly what we will be talking about today. Uh, my name is Yurei Hope, and I'm the Chief Meeting Designer at Slido. And here with me is Christina. And my name is Christina Kumar, and I'm the colleague of uh, Yurei, working also for Slido. And I'm in charge of educating our users, our potential users, about how to, not about only how to use Slido, but of course about how to engage and how to interact in the meetings and events. And uh, just a brief overview of what actually is ahead of us today. Uh, in the first part, we are going to look at the very specific 13 uh, ideas of how you can virtually engage with your audience. And in the second part, we will uh, want to address all of your questions. So please uh, feel free to submit these questions throughout the entire session. Uh, you can submit them under slido.com under the same event with the event called Eventex. I have also shared directly in the chat as well. So please feel free to, to submit those questions and we will get to them at the very end. If you are brave enough, you can of course uh, also unmute yourself and ask a question uh, yourself. We will be only happy to, to answer that, uh, that as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, Christina. And let's just dive straight into it. And the first, the first um, tip I would have for you is potentially a little bit counterintuitive, but let me tell you why it's important to invite a co-facilitator when you are hosting an online event, webinar, or just an online presentation. Uh, leading up to this event, uh, I was really thinking that I'm going to deliver this presentation by myself, but as we were drawing nearer to the date, I started thinking like, no, 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 this doesn't really feel right. I need somebody right next to me to basically deliver this talk. And the reasons are a, a few of the, a, there are a few reasons why to do that. The first thing that co-facilitator can really uh, help you deliver a more, deliver content in a more engaging way. You can swap, you can deliver it in a tandem, and that's why I invited 
my awesome colleague Christina to help me with that. But also a great facilitator or a co-facilitator can also help you monitor the chat, answer any questions, uh, activate the polls and do all the troubleshooting that is really needed. So you as a presenter can also focus on the delivery. And the third part is when you move to the Q&A section, instead of just reading out the, 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 the questions yourself, you can really have one person act like a moderator and emulate a dialogue which otherwise would be a monotonous um, uh, delivery, a monotonous broadcast. So the first step actually before you even start with engaging people is that you need a sidekick, you need somebody to have right next to you. So the first step would be really invite a facilitator who will help you to deliver uh, that engaging content. Christina, over to you. Uh, and if you really want to deliver that engaging content and you want to actually interact with your online audience, uh, it's always great to start from the beginning. So you really need to make sure that you start with this engagement activity at the very, very beginning of your event, just like we did today before uh, some of you even joined in. We've asked you this very same question of where are you joining us from? It's a very simple question. But if you interact from the very beginning, you are actually setting that expectation from your audience. So you are really expecting from them to interact. And this is a clear sign for them that they are not just there to passively listen to and observe your content, but they, they are actually expected to interact with you throughout the, entire, throughout the entire thing. You don't need to use any serious kind of icebreakers. You can always use humor or anything very light. So you actually put those uh, participants in a very nice, relaxed uh, mood. And uh, that way they will also be uh, then more likely to share later on the, uh, their insights and their opinions. So this is a really important uh, part of the meeting or event, the very, very beginning and the engagement taking place at the very beginning. Yeah. And uh, you're over to you. Yes, thank you indeed. Um, this, is a, this is a tip that we learned from our colleagues as they were running the virtual training. And at the start, it's also good to set some kind of a ground rules, especially if you have a smaller training or smaller meeting. And being in a virtual environment, um, it sort of hinders this kind of a spontaneous reaction, right? We lack on the physical feedback, we can't see the gestures, we can't really read the facial expressions. So think about or consider agreeing on the virtual gestures or on the gestures that would uh, improve that communication during the, the, the meeting. Again, over here, from our internal training, at the very start, my colleague said, all right, so folks, if you agree with me, I want you all to show a thumb up into your camera. I need that feedback from you. So we agreed that yes, all right, if he asks us any question, we're going to show him a thumb up. We are not really sure. We're just going to use a sideways thumb up, meaning like, mm, I still have a question. I'm not really sure about it. Or if we strongly disagree or if we have any further like, concerns, we should so show a thumb down. It brings this kind of a physical element to the meeting and, it, and, it, and, and it's really refreshing not to just rely on the virtual engagement. Obviously, you can do these things through Zoom uh, and they are absolutely brilliant, but you can also agree on that kind of a physical gestures. And you can come up with other ones. If you celebrate something, we usually show this kind of a gesture like a victory shake, uh, or if we wanna share an affection, just show a heart into the camera. So there are a lot of ways how to really bring that physical, how to bring those physical gestures to the online meeting. So play around with those, they always work great. So let's imagine our event is already rolling and what we really want is not just to engage with the people on some kind of superficial level, just asking people where they are journeying from, but we really want to engage with their brains. So we really want them to actually actively uh, engage with our content that we are presenting. So uh, we have been inspired by uh, but yet by Jan Yap and their Mauer here, and we have seen a great example of power posting. Now, what does that mean? Is basically you uh, think about the topic you are going to talk about in your session, in your webinar, or in your presentation, and you think of a question or an assignment that you can give to your audience. They then go online and they research something in a very short amount of time. They come back to either the chat or any kind of platform that you're using, and they simply post some kind of answer that you have uh, 
an answer to the question you have given them. So this is called power posting. And instead of talking about it, I really want to uh, give you an example of it. So what I would now love to ask you is the following. Please, all of you, also try to go online, uh, open any uh, browser, and try to research the answer to the question of what is the average human span, human attention span. We are talking about the engagement, about how to stay focused, and so on. So we really would like to know what is the average human attention span. So you can open uh, internet, your internet browser and just simply type in, and I'm really curious to know what you come up with. Once you have come up with your answer, please uh, post it in the Slido event, not, not in the chat. Uh, uh, just go to the slido.com. Uh, event code event text. I have warned you will be using a lot of questions, a lot of posts. So if you haven't logged in there yet, please do so. And we are already getting some of the answers. Uh, eight seconds, right? So four of you have already got eight seconds according to study by Microsoft. Five seconds. Eight seconds. All right, five seconds. All right. I'm seconds. wondering. So this is one way of really uh, starting uh, you to really think about and activating the brain cells uh, on the topic of uh, human attention span, engagement, focus, attention, and so on. Some people are also posting questions in the chat. Uh, that's okay, but please also post them in Slido so we actually can nicely see them in one uh, overview slide. And Christina, I think the attention span is even decreasing. <laughs> we we dropped as little as two 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 seconds. Two seconds. Oh wow, that is that is a surprise to me as well. Uh, but you are you are right. There are so many uh, research studies on the topic, uh, and according to those studies, it really varies from as short as we can see two seconds to actually up to twenty or thirty minutes even. So really the, the opinion on the topic varies, but it has already engaged you with the content. And what I wanted to say with this is that our human attention span is short and do, we do need to engage. But what is actually a fact is that the human attention span in the online environment is even shorter than in the live uh, physical space and that's why we really recommend from our own experience we've been running lots of online events and online uh, webinars that you really need to make sure that you engage your audience every five to seven minutes now if you structure your content around these uh, engagement activities every five to seven minutes you have it nicely structured in chunks and you can really nicely present it and uh, also that way you can uh, just uh, make sure that it's uh, really digestible for your participants and it's in bite-sized pieces. And one extra tip just to add here to make sure you avoid the so-called uh, death by PowerPoint, that you only present one idea per slide. So don't overwhelm your audience with lots of uh, great ideas and great points in one slide, but make sure you stick to only one idea per slide. Cool, thank you so much, Christina. Moving on. and. Definitely one of the ways how to engage um, people repeatedly every five to seven minutes is through the live calls. And this is what we have been doing uh, so far quite extensively uh, because especially at a large meeting, at a large conference where people don't have their cameras on, from the speaker's perspective, it truly feels like speaking into the key. Like you are not getting any feedback. And relying on the technology, uh, whether it's like polls or chat, is the, really the only way how to um, get that instant, basically, feedback from the audience. And here are some cool examples from the virtual events that we worked with. And this is, uh, this is from the NHS, um, the Agency National Health... Uh, oh, National sorry. Health For, Service. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. It slipped my tongue. Uh, so, yes, exactly. So, they organized a virtual event. And take a look at that question. It was really a thought-provoking poll. Was COVID-19 engineered? And as you can see, there were over 120 um, responses. And 14% said yes, whether they truly believed it or not. Uh, that's really hard to say, but it definitely sparked some interaction. And it naturally draws people into the conversation that you're having or into the content. So this is a really cool way how to bring people um, basically come, come back in, especially if you ask a question with the polarizing answers. Um, another one, 
uh, which we really like using, and you had a chance to experience it at the start, is the word cloud, right? It helps you to learn what the audience thinks, crowdsource those ideas. And you can see over here from another event that we uh, work with, Eurective, they were asking really timely, basically, question. If there, were, um, if there were a Marshall Plan for Europe, which sector should it be focused on? And as you can see, you've got a range of diverse opinion, and that's very difficult to collect in, in any other way. But for you as a speaker or a panelist, it is really a powerful, powerful information to build your speech on or to at least to comment on. And the last thing, uh, events or meetings are also run to celebrate people, to bring them together and just to celebrate them, those who went an extra mile, those who deserve uh, the credit. And this is an activity that we do at every single one of our All Hands meetings. So our CEO, uh, Peter, he prompts the whole team to submit the name of one silent hero of a colleague who went an extra mile. And in this way, we are able to celebrate all those people whose work would go completely unnoticed. And it's not only about that one person who actually wins, it's about all those silent heroes that are over there on the screen. And it's a really strong and bonding experience, whether you're organi organizing an all-hands meeting or a conference for your association or with, with, with your community. So those were a few tips, uh, how to use live polls to, to, to drive more engagement. Christina, over to you. And another great way how you can actually interact uh, and get the interaction from your participants is to divide them into smaller groups. So for example, today we are using Zoom meetings uh, and then in Zoom, it's actually very simple to use the breakout rooms. So, uh, but uh, this is possible using other, other video conferencing platforms as well. So this is not limited to Zoom only, but you, what you uh, uh, simply do is you divide your uh, attendees into smaller groups in breakout sessions and that way you really allow them to get more comfortable if they are in smaller groups they will really be more likely to share some of their insights some of their stories and then the quality of the interaction is is even higher uh, the kind of amount of people we recommend for you to to use in one uh, breakout room is about five to six people then it works really great and people get that uh, get that energy and get the sense of really wanting to share so Please, if you haven't used it before, try to use breakout rooms and you will really see how that really works. Magic is, is a great tip also for trying to network, to do some kind of networking in virtual events, because it's also something we, uh, a lot of us struggle with in these uh, Corona times. So if you actually divide your attendees into smaller groups, they will then be more likely to network, to get to know each other because they will just be in a smaller, smaller group. So yeah. another tip there for you. Yes, indeed. Physical activity. One would think that it's really impossible to do something physical when we join the virtual environment. Again, uh, we, were, uh, we, were, we were proven wrong. It is possible if you just facilitate it well. Usually this works better with a smaller group of people and we've got almost 50 people on this call, so we are going to try it with you. And how it works uh, is that don't be afraid to give people a small assignment that involves the movement, whether it's around your apartment or somewhere even out, and give them something to think about. And this is something what we learned from Yan Yap, the facilitation uh, basically expert, and we're really well. And again, instead of just talking about it, we would like you to do the following. In the next two minutes, we want you to stand up and leave your computer and just walk around your apartment. In the meantime, you can just grab a, a glass of water or just like refill uh, your cup with a coffee, but just walk around. And while you'll be doing that, look for one thing in your apartment or in your office, wherever you are joining from, that you truly find inspiring and you would like to bring to your live events, right? So once again, it can be, it can be a noise canceling headphones uh, because they were great to eliminate the noise. It can be your plants to bring more life to the, uh, to, the, to the conference rooms, or it can be a gourmet coffee that you boil every single, every single day. So it's really up to you. And I'm going to start actually a timer over here that will just uh, hit the gong um, after the two minutes. And once you hear the gong, please come back, all right? 
So I'm going to hit start and please leave your, leave your computer and just walk around your apartment and look for that one thing that you would like to bring to your events and recreate them. So the time is now. Shall I do this well? Yes, let's do it. So we really walk the talk. Perfect. I already brought something along with me. Hopefully you too, Christina. Of course I did. <laughs> Do you want to show it already? Um, yes, we can wait for the others. Like maybe two minutes was, but it's, it's okay. We are midway through. So let's, let's have a short, short break in, in between while people are work, walking around, refilling their cups. And we are going to, in the meantime, I'm going to move um, to the next slide. If you are back at your screens, please go back to Slido and post, post that one thing, all right? So again, for those of you who joined us a bit later, just scan the code and let us know what is the one thing that you would like to bring to your, to your um, events once we get back to the normal. And I'm going to back to the timer. We have tw 20 more seconds. And once the gong hit the ring, we're going to ask you that. This is actually a really cool thing, this uh, timer. You can probably hear the sound. Five, four, three, two, one. Perfect, so we heard the gong. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look, perfect. We have good coffee, beautifully smelling candle. I love it. I have one just right over here, <laughs> as you can see. So I totally, I, I, I love that thing. Coziness, agree. My glasses, that might be useful. <laughs> what about the others? We have almost 50 people. Inspiring art, love it. I brought an apple, uh, yep. but this is, this is a high quality apple and this is something I missed when going to events. There is normally not good quality fruit. <laughs> so I would really bring that to, to, the, to a conference or to something I would attend. Cool. Tennis balls. I would absolutely love to know why. <laughs> <laughs> Tennis balls, but fair enough. Uh, good snacks. Agree. It helps to reduce stress, right? Perhaps you are playing with a tennis ball, maybe. I, I, I think so. It's my Confi guess. Shoes. <laughs> Confi shoes. Yes, 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 indeed. Uh, they can really self save the day. My pajamas. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> cool. Well, what I actually brought along, um, it's, I would love to, let me just see, it's a, it's a plant. I would love to see more plants, um, in, in, in fact, in, uh, in, the, in the meeting rooms in general. Like, they, they feel very often sterile and, and, and really just plants, they bring some, some, some more life and, 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 and just make it or much more cozier, as somebody, as somebody said. My couch, agree, like seating can be painful in the, in the meeting rooms. Music as well, totally. And we've got some people, I believe, posting also in the chat. So let's take a look over there. Um, lots of interesting games with tennis balls. Thanks so much, Adam, for expanding on that. <laughs> pets count? Yes, indeed, pets count as well. Uh, we have seen at uh, a couple of conferences that they had a corner with pets, uh, with, with, uh, with puppies that people were able to pet and just to play around to decrease the stress. Uh, so hopefully it was decreasing the stress for the pets as well. But uh, yeah, there's been, there's been some pets as well. Thank you so much. So again, please take this as an experiment, right? Um, but it is possible to bring some kind of a physical activity even to the virtual meetings and the conferences. And especially with your team, um, you know, where the, the, the atmosphere is a little bit more casual. This works like a great icebreaker at the, at the, at the start of it. So thanks so much, uh, all of you, for, for posting. And uh, let's move on. One of the questions, in fact, uh, from the chat was, what uh, timer was it? And we absolutely love it. It's called Big Timer. In the top left corner, you can see, uh, you can see the link. 
You can set the, 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 the time limit over there. It's got pretty visuals. Um, that's kind of an effect of a blinking and decreasing basically uh, time with the, with the gong at the end. So it's called the big timer. That would be a tip uh, number nine from our side. Works great also for breakout rooms, um, breakout room sessions, or even for the breaks in general. Uh, like as people are still on the call, you, they can see the timer over there. Uh, 30 minute break going to 20, 15, 10, et cetera. All right, talking about the tools, uh, Christina, over to you. Especially talking about the fun tools to make your event even, uh, even more fun and more engaging. So I'm sure you have come across a situation when you asked a question and you wanted a volunteer to answer the question. And then there was this awkward silence. No one would raise the hand. Everyone would basically have their camera turned off just so that don't, they don't need to answer the question. But one way how to deal with that is actually to use this great uh, tool the Wheel of Names, which Yura is going to demonstrate to you in a second. And the way it works very simply, you basically type in uh, the names of your attendees. Uh, you first ask the question and then you spin the wheel. Uh, so Yura can now spin the wheel. And uh, in this time, people can already think about the answer. They are what they are going to, how they are going to react to your question. And we see, okay, Beatrice is going to be the lucky one who is going to answer this question. So this is again a nice way how to bring some kind of fun element to your to your event, but at the same time also give people enough time to think about the answers and actually get ready. So they are not just put in a spotlight ad hoc and without no time for preparation. So here you can in the lower left corner you can also see the the link to that tool it's, it's free and i really recommend using it it's, it's just a great way to impress your audience cool and talking about the different tools and fun another way how to bring more fun to your meetings is run a virtual pop quiz it can be a part of the session or it can be a standalone session on its own and over here this is actually politico right a really serious magazine and in order to engage their readers they ran a standalone a virtual pop quiz session about the European Union and about the politics. So you can integrate this uh, into your agenda. You can, you can organize this with your team uh, just to basically unwind. And it's a really fun way how to bring that engagement up. Also, this is a really cool way how to deliver some serious you know, stats and numbers. We also use it during our all hands meetings to deliver, let's say, quarterly stats. How much revenue did we make? How many, um, how many customers do we have? What are our retention numbers? So this is actually of a, this could be of a great use also to deliver, as I said, some kind of a numbers with your boss or yourself if you are a team lead or just organize a fun session as part of your virtual event. So definitely, um, definitely recommend considering a virtual pop quiz, you can run it through Slido or you can run it through uh, many other platforms basically that are out there. Moving on. Uh, one great advantage about running live event in physical space with physical people in that one room is that you can actually come and approach the speaker right after they finish talking. Now, this is something you cannot do in an online event, and that's why it's super important that you dedicate even a longer time to the Q&A part of your session. So really, we have uh, seen this being uh, extremely popular and in, even in our all hands internal meetings, we now dedicate about 25 or 30 minutes of a hour and 30 minute meeting just to the Q&A part because really this is such an important and crucial part to address the questions of the online attendees. And uh, I have three additional tips when it comes to the, to the Q&A part of your meeting. Uh, the first one being that you can actually start collecting the questions for this part before the event even starts. That way, uh, the attendees will have enough time to think about the questions, so the quality of the questions being asked will be much higher. And at the same time, the speakers addressing those questions will have more time to prepare for the answers, so even the quality of the answers will be much higher as well. The, set, the second tip when it comes to, to running the, the Q&A part of your session is that you can let your audience up of the questions. So today we are using Slido, of course, because we are from Slido, so a great feature or a great advantage of using that is that you can actually like the questions from other participants that you like and that way at the end we will only address the most burning the most relevant questions to the majority of the audience so this is really a nice way how to crowdsource the best questions 
And the third tip uh, uh, I have when it comes to running the Q&A is to really have that facilitator. So the two of us today here are there because we also want to uh, lead the Q&A part as a natural conversation between two people. And this is what having a facilitator allows you to, to do. So those are the three additional tips when it comes to running the, the Q&A. And you I over to you to the last tip of today. Exactly. And so the last tip would be you can, when you want to wrap up really your meeting or your event, there's not a better way, more team building way how, as, as, as taking a group photo just to wrap up the whole thing, right? We do it in the live events and in the, in the virtual events, even, it's even simpler, right? Because everybody's on the camera. Um, so you can really elevate on that. You can really use that fact to create those beautiful pictures of everybody being on the call uh, and even, even take it a one step further, right? Over here, we even wrote one word to wrap up uh, the, the, the workshop that we participate in. Or you can ask people to uh, write something on a piece of paper and show it to the camera, right? Or coming back to the virtual gestures, show some kind of a gesture and then take a picture of that. It's a great way then how to, it, it, it's a great material to post uh, with your community afterwards or just share on your social media and show uh, how the event basically went, uh, went down. So the group photo would be definitely uh, the, 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 the last tip. And as we are drawing near, my question would be, would you like to actually try that? But you would have to turn the cameras on over here. So if you could, let's actually try that. I will go, I will go, to, the, I will go to, the, to the Zoom meeting. So let's please turn your cameras on. I can see the thumbs up, perfect. So even if you don't have makeup on, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> That's totally okay. So please turn on your cameras and we're going to take one group photo together. I'm just going to take a screenshot. So uh, all of us who joined this, I love the virtual background, Patrick, with, uh, <laughs> with the Star Wars character. That's, that's amazing. Cool. <laughs> I love it. This is so great. By the way, virtual backgrounds, as you can see, I'm joining from the, from the, from, from the moon. Uh, that's also a fun way how to bring more engagement uh, and interaction to your meetings. So we've got people turning on their cameras. Let me take a screenshot. You will hear the shutter probably. So thank you so much all who are joining us right now. And perfect. Let's take one more. And let's take one more. And one more. Perfect. Thank you so much. This is, this is so cool. And uh, as this was... As this was basically the, the last up, oh, the last tip, we are going to move uh, to the Q and A uh, session over here, and we've got already some questions in. Now we would like to give you a few moments to review those questions over here through Slido. They're also on the screen, and as uh, Christina mentioned, you can upvote them. So we are going to start with the with the with the with the most popular one. Uh, submitted, um, submitted by Sam, which is, uh, which is fantastic that you put your name to it. Sam, thank you so much for asking. And Christina, over to you. Uh, should business invest in a standalone virtual platform or use Zoom in combination with a really strong solution for aggregated data collection? Thank you, Sam, for this question. This is a very valid question. And uh, maybe I wouldn't put myself in the role of an expert for a video conferencing platforms. Uh, I can only speak from uh, our own experience as Slido. We have been using Zoom for a very long time and we haven't had any problem with it at all. Uh, I know there have been some talks about uh, security and other things when it comes to Zoom specifically, but from our own experience, we have been using uh, Zoom and it's, it's worked just great. Uh, whether businesses should invest in a standalone virtual event platform, uh, I leave this totally up to up to you to decide because this is really not not my place to to judge. Uh, Yuri, would you like to some to add something to that? Of course, uh, it's it all depends on the format, right? So some virtual events they are run from a from a single place, right? From a virtual studio uh, where you need to have a really solid uh, live streaming solution, and 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 the setup um, on on the backstage looks almost at like at, at the live event. So in that case, um, you might consider using a different platform to bring it all together, your live stream, 
your interactive element and let's say banners with, uh, with the sponsors. This is, uh, for instance, what Financial Times did with their global boardroom uh, event where they brought together like 100,000 um, participants. So it largely depends on what you want to achieve. But Zoom is definitely a great uh, place where to host most of these uh, events, especially if they are up to, I'd say, 200. Uh, I would use Zoom meetings, uh, Zoom webinars, they can go to 2,000 to people. So um, just, just to your question, Sam, I would, I would go uh, like this. And actually following up on that question, a similar question from uh, an anonymous person. Do you think businesses are panicking and burning money on temporary solutions to go virtual while, while they should be focusing on hybrid solutions for the next year? Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is a super valid question. And uh, we, we hosted, um, actually no, we, we worked with the GMID Goes Virtual event, uh, which brought together almost 13,000 events professionals. And the last, the last poll that we ran was exactly about the future of events industry. And uh, overwhelming majority, I think it was 60 or 70 plus percent of people said that the future will be hybrid. So coming back to your question, I think it would be absolutely ideal to start looking for a solution that you will be able to use in the future as well as part of your hybrid events, uh, because the virtual element is definitely here to stay. It proved that you can reach a much wider audience um, at, at, at a fraction of the cost. So I think you can kill two birds with one stone if you look for a, for a solution that would support your uh, hybrid events in the future. Talking about the platforms, Christina, one question for you. Uh, the Anonymous is asking, what platform uh, do you use to host virtual events? As I've already mentioned in the, while answering the first question, we at Slido, we actually use uh, Zoom to host our events. We use the combination. So uh, when we are running an external event, uh, I run web weekly webinars and I always use uh, Zoom webinar, but I actually combine it with a Slido integration. So the attendees actually join using a Slido link and the uh, Zoom webinar video is integrated directly into it. So this is what we uh, we have been using for quite some time now. Um, I hope I answered the question. And uh, Yura, over to you. How do you think event staff can be incorporated into virtual events? Mm -hmm. uh, again, great, great question. Event staff, that's a rather general term. So I will, I, I don't know whether we're talking about the volunteers or AV tech, um, tech people or anybody else who is involved. But my answer, and, and I'm coming back to the tip number one. Uh, if you're running virtual events, you need an extra pair of hands, sometimes even two or three or four pairs of hands to really pull it off. Um, no matter what the size is, um, I would always welcome or an, an, an invite a colleague to help you. So that would, be, that would be the first way how to bring another people on board. Then the second thing, if you've got a more elaborate setup, you really need the technical support. And as I mentioned in my previous answer, some events, uh, they have incredible production, right? So that's another way how to incorporate uh, basically event stuff. Again, then we've got the moderators. Uh, moderator, even in the virtual setting, is, is, a, is of a crucial, it's got a crucial importance. So there are many ways how to bring people uh, together and, and make them a part of the virtual event. Christina, um, the question about the sliding, I think it's a Slido question. So are the Slido questions and comments anonymous? Uh, so this is totally up to you. You as a participant can decide whether you uh, post your question anonymously, just like you did right now, it says anonymous, or you went uh, the way like Amy and Adam who actually put their names down. This is totally up to you. When it comes to the uh, votes that you voted in polls, uh, these are anonymous as well, unless you actually put your, put your name down. This is how it works. And uh, following up uh, to the next question from Amy, what are some of the best ways to use virtual engagement to complement other business outputs, such as website, published content, and so on? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just like thinking about the answer. Again, I would love to know a little bit more so I can give you a more precise um, answer. But one, coming back to what Christina said, one way to start driving virtual engagement is even is, is possible even before you actually start the, the meeting or the, 
or the event. So start crowdsourcing the topics, um, engage people with voting on the polls. Um, you can also uh, collect the questions as, as, as Christina said and prepare those really valuable answers. So there are different ways how you can do that. You can even embed the interactive tools like Slider and many others into the website and make it more engaging. So there are ways how to do that. So hopefully I gave you a few ideas on that. I would maybe just add quickly there, uh, really using a quiz can, is very underestimated because people love playing quizzes and you can always uh, do the quiz in a very serious kind of way. So use your, uh, your published content, your website as a, as a source for the quiz and then make sure that your attendees interact with its content. That way they actually learn more about it and they will even remember the information that they consumed using, using the quiz. So just actually, one more idea that came to my mind, Christina, as you were, as you were addressing um, this question, is that you can also work with the with the unanswered questions from your event. And you can turn them into a blog post, let's say, or you can pass them on to your CEO and uh, put together the answers for the rest of the team. Or one thing that we did after the GMID, we crowdsourced some amazing insights about the future of the industry and we turned it into a PR article. So you can even, all that interaction data that you collect live, you can work with that and turn it into a, a valuable content. Um, Magdal Magdalena, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so, and, 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 and thanks for the question. Uh, networking is definitely a big topic. So, uh, Christina, what about networking at virtual events? Any good practices you can share? Breakout rooms in Zoom are actually quite awkward. With a larger number of people they are, uh, they work well to a certain number of people. I agree with you on that. Uh, yes, but I would actually argue, uh, have you already uh, tried it? Because I actually thought as well that it would be very awkward. But un until I was put into that situation, really, if you if it's just the two or three of you in a small group, you can talk about so much, you can network really well and uh, deeply, I would say. So I, I think breakout rooms, just give it one chance, just one shot if, if you like it. But if not, uh, then uh, let me just think quickly about some other ideas. You know, does, it, does anything come to your mind uh, straight away? Uh, about some other networking activities? Yes. Uh, this, this is a big topic and uh, we are going to be a part of the up upcoming uh, in, Engage webinar uh, hosted by Event Manager Blog. In about, um, in about an hour and a half. And we were trying to come up with something uh, meaningful over there. If you do not have a networking platform like Grella, for instance, that is very difficult. Or the one that the Eventex is using, that's very difficult, especially with a uh, thousand people on the call. So again, you can give them some kind of a, a physical exercise. That's what we want to, what we want to experiment with today. Pair it with some kind of a quiz and keep people engaged but uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. Like if, um, if you're going to come up with some kind of ideas, we're always happy and, and open to hear it. Um, so please even post them to the, to the chat. Would love to hear more on those. Um, I think it's for the whole industry to practice. And we're moving to the last, uh, to the last question uh, over for you, uh, Christina. Is there a point where the amount of interactivity can become too much by Adam? Thank you so much. Uh I think so, uh, and this is where we actually, this is why we came up with that estimate of engagement every five to seven minutes, because from our experience, this is kind of the tested, uh, tested time interval where interaction is not too much and not too little. But perhaps uh, putting an interaction point every two minutes, it would just be really too much and uh, you would uh, just overwhelm your audience and not actually deliver any, any valuable content to them. So from my experience, really, I would say the five to seven minutes, don't, don't go over and don't go under. And we have just run out of the questions and we are more or less right on time as we started a bit later. So we want to thank you all for participating your questions. Uh, all your questions, and before you leave, you know, when you hop on an Uber ride uh, and you, you got out of the taxi, they always ask you to, to, leave, um, to leave your rating. And we would like to ask you to do, to do the same. It's super simple. All you have to do is just to start this, this session, how much you liked it, there is a scale of one to 10, again, at Slido. So those of you who are at Slido, just please go, go over there. Uh, just leave, um, leave your rating. If you have any comments, 
positive, negative, stuff that we can improve. We would really, really appreciate it so we can make this uh, session better for all the future audiences. Uh, and we've got already some people filling it in. So really appreciate it. And thanks so much for finding the time. Thank you from me as well. Thank you so much uh, for letting us be here, Eventex, uh, and letting us present to our lovely audience. And thank you for sharing all the insights with us and uh, being physically active as well. So thank you so much and have a lovely day. Thanks so much. And thank you for all the lovely comments in the chat. Uh, it's great to hear you found it useful. And let's stay in touch if you would like to reach back um, and ask about anything about audience engagement technology or, or just chat in general. Here are our addresses, uh, jholub at the slider.com, that's mine. And Christina, you're at education at slider. And I'm at education at slider. And you don't need to move the slide anymore because I have activated the poll, so it should stay active already. Perfect. So thank you guys uh, so much for joining and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.